Hey guys, welcome to today's video. My name is Kat. As always, thank you for stopping in. Today we are creating a an illusion prop for Halloween. I love Disney. I'm a big Disney fan. When I saw this at Disneyland the last time I went, I knew I had to create a prop for Halloween. You will need a foam mannequin head. These ones I got from the dollar store for four bucks. You can find them on Amazon, but check out your local dollar store. I picked up some picture frames also from the dollar store. They are eight by tens. So they're eight by 10 picture frames. I only need the actual kind of glass portion of them. You will also need a mirror. You will need some epoxy. You will need a glue gun. I got a lot of Halloween content coming down the pipeline. So be sure you're subscribed for that. All right, let's just hop in. So first thing you want to do is take your mannequin head. This is a whole mannequin head, but I have another mannequin head we have. And the reason why we're going to have this is because we're going to put a mirror in the middle of it. And I'll show you how this works. So the idea is going to be, we're going to go from Snow White to the, to the witch. And as the trick or treaters walk by, they will see Snow White and she will turn into a witch because of the illusion. We're going to need to build a box that it's going to go into and that's why we have the picture frames. So to cut these foam heads, you can use a utility knife. Be very careful if you do it. You can do a, a hot wire cut as well or if you want to, you can use a serrated knife from your kitchen. Um, we just used a utility knife. It worked out really, really well and we sanded down the inside forms of them so they're nice and flush and flat. We're going to put those away for now because we are going to just build the box that it is going to sit in. So I'm going to take all of the glass out of the frames and how you do that is you just pull these little tabs back. They should be fairly straightforward and simple. Take all the paperwork out. Take the actual frame off. And this is the piece you want. So we're going to do that for all four. So I brought you guys down on a little closer so you have a better visual. So this is it's like a tempered glass. It's not like glass glass. It is breakable though, so be careful. I've got all four pieces out of their frames. So I've got my husband here to help me just because it is like a two person type build. So I've got my hot glue gun ready. And we're just gonna run a bead between the two pieces of tempered glass. We're gonna let that dry. And then we are gonna epoxy the outside so it has a firmer and stronger hold, but just for to, for the purposes of holding it together until we get to that point, that's the reason why we're gonna um, glue it together with hot glue. Okay, so we've got a box almost glued together. As you let it dry, once it becomes touchable, I'm in the box, isn't that cute? So once it becomes touchable, just run your finger down to make kind of a smooth Edge, I know I've got like spider webs everywhere. You can use those little trowels too if you feel that's how you should do it. But I'm okay touching hot glue. I've done this lots before. Just to kind of give it a smooth like finish is always what we're looking for. We're gonna epoxy the edges um, of the glass here. And the reason for that is I, not that I don't trust the hot glue, I just want a very firm and solid hold on it because I want this prop to last for a very long time. So we've got a, uh, it's a five minute two part epoxy and we're just gonna epoxy the side. So once he's done this, we're gonna let it dry for five and then we will be right back. So we're just gonna measure straight across the middle and that is the measurement you wanna cut your glass on. So I picked up a mirror at Walmart. So these are the mirrors that hang over the back of the door at Walmart. They are pretty cheap. Like this one was 10 bucks. It is a quote unquote full length mirror. Um, you may need two depending on the size of your project. You may need one depending on the size of your project. It just so happens that this one I can cut directly down the middle and I've got the appropriate length for my project. And you will need a glass cutter. This is what a glass cutter looks like, and it's got a little dial on it here. I've dialed it up so it's like the largest and most depth it can go. Good luck, Kat. I'm, I'm gonna wear my sunglasses. You should wear some safety goggles while you're doing it. Also, uh, probably wear some gloves, only because this could shatter. I haven't done this in a long time. When you're breaking glass or mirrors, you want equal amount of pressure and down. 
So now we got our two pieces of mirror and obviously they are face down for a reason. We've put epoxy, two part epoxy on this. It's five minute quick dry epoxy. We're gonna make sure it's completely square and epoxy them together. In about five minutes, this will dry and then I'll circle back and I'll show you exactly what we're doing. So I've taken this foam head and I've sealed it with just Mod Podge. I did that yesterday so it was dry. Then as I said, we cut it in half. So ideally what's gonna happen here, once we get this all together, there is gonna be a mirror facing out, reflecting what's going on here. So I have this old Halloween mask that we are gonna use. We're gonna pop, cut it in half and put it on half of the mannequin head. And the other half is gonna be like a Snow White looking character. We'll take half her head, bloop. We'll cut this mask in half. We're gonna glue an eyeball in it as well, just to give it a more realistic look. You can find a ton of masks at any dollar store, crafting store, what have you. So just like the foam head, we have two pieces of this mask now. When you put this mask on there, you can see that there's obviously no eyeball on it. So I went to the dollar store and got some ping pong type eyeballs. Um, they were $1.25. I just thought they looked really cool. You can go a little bit more realistic and use like a latex one. This is a latex eyeball you can do stuff and crafts with. But what's going to happen, so I've taken the eyeball, I've cut it in half, so it's half a ping pong ball eyeball. And once this mask is on there, oops, It'll look something like that. So it will have an eye in the end, giving it obviously a more realistic look. But what we wanna do first is cover the entire foam half head with the mask. So I kinda just wanna line it up to the concaves of the face. And I start on like the back edge and just do this very slowly and surely. Make sure it's very, a sure fit because you don't want to be seeing any of this foam when it reflects on the mirror because it, it will break the illusion. Okay guys, so now what we're gonna do, this is kind of the fun part, this is the really creative part. So remember those two heads, the head we split into two, sorry, and I've masked this one. And obviously the Wicked Witch from Snow White has more of a Caucasian type tone, not a green tone. So I'm gonna paint her out with acrylic paints, obviously just one half. And then the other half we're gonna do as Snow White. So she's gonna have a very pale face. We're gonna probably do her as sleeping Snow White. And so we're just gonna go ahead and paint them with acrylic paints. I have a very special little guest. My, my daughter, Little Red, she's popped in and out of other videos. So she's hey gonna- Hey guys, um, these are new kitty ears. She's got new kitty ears on. So she's gonna help me paint these. So we're just gonna paint them with I acrylic. Thought, I thought it would be more like, like the theme for this program more more like the theme for the program but anyway we are gonna turn around and go paint these with acrylic paints yep. and then we will see you back when we're done yes bye guys <laughs> So remember what our mask looked like? It was kind of this green. This is the half of it that I did not paint. This is what it's going to look like. So she's starting to kind of come together. Once it's dry, I'll flip her cape over and get rid of the red. Now we are going to work on the Snow White half. Okay, so guys, we've got the Snow White, Snow White side painted. And we've also got the witch side painted. So imagine a mirror going down the middle and it morphing from the witch to Snow White. But a couple things we need for Snow White, obviously. She's got this beautiful, like really dark black lock. So I ended up picking up a wig from the Dollar Tree, Dollar General. We're gonna put this wig on her and I will style it along with a little bow. But also I've got some eyelashes. These are just wispies from Pro Beauty. They are just literally real eyelashes you would get from the beauty store. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on her eye. So you guys, I've put a real eyelash on. Look how realistic that makes it look. 
And yeah, so then we're gonna wig up, but I just wanted to just give you guys an up close view why I chose to use like a real eyelash thing. So I've actually hot glued it on. I cut the wig in half and flipped the majority of the hair over to this side so it did look a little fuller. I gave her a little bang and pinned it right into the styrofoam with a bobby pin. I went ahead and sprayed it with some heavy hole hairspray and once I've kind of got it all finessed in, I'm going to spray it some more. But I wanted to show you because Snow White has this beautiful red bow and I was at the dollar store and they didn't have red ribbon. However, I did remember that I had a bunch of Christmas ribbon left over. It's like a, it's a thick thing that's probably two inch uh, ribbon with the wire and it works perfectly. So when all I've done is I folded it and, I, and then I folded it in half again, keeping the sparkly side out because I thought it was really, really pretty. And we're just going to hot glue that on to give her her little red bow. So obviously I got little red with me. She is just pumped about this project. I am too. So babe, I need some assistance. Will you A hold this red head? on service. Will you hold this down here? Sure. And back on the back side? It's important to hold this down or else it'll, or else it won't work. So remember we have half a head here. Hold it there tight. Blue gun. Check. Make sure ask your parents if you can use one. I'm just going to make sure that sits on there. And then what I'm going to do, because from the pictures that we had saw or we referenced, the hair bow comes up and over top, just turn, comes up and her hair bobs around. And we're just going to let that dry and then I'm going to cut off the excess and then we'll just finesse the hair with some hairspray. So this is extremely important about the placement. So you can measure it inside of your box or because I kind of know what we're doing, we're gonna just mark it. So we're gonna go ahead and glue, be careful. hot glue this. It, this is gonna be fast. So guys, we've discovered that the hot glue does not work super well. So we did use the epoxy that we had at the beginning of the video. And so, you see the illusion here? It looks like she's got a full head. And then once we turn it, it's actually a half head. So this is the same illusion that Disney uses in Pirates of the Caribbean and Haunted Mansion to make things change or disappear. That's why I wanted to do this build today because I absolutely love Disney. And because I can't get down there, I wanted to bring a little bit of you know, the park to me, I want to give a shout out to two YouTube channels that kind of inspire me to do this. One is Provost Park Pass and the other one is Paging Mr. Morrow. They are making my love of Disney continue throughout like the quarantine and the, you know, the COVID situation. So this is just one of those little tricks that they use. So we're going to go ahead and put the witch on the other side. We're going to use epoxy this time. All right. So everybody remember that box we built at the beginning of this video. This is the box from the, the beginning of the video. Um, so this base actually came from a restore here in where I live and it was a rotating bookcase. It was really tall but the bookcase part was kind of wonky, whatever. I highly encourage you guys to check out the local reused place, restore, Salvation Army, any thrift type stores because you can always find some good finds for some builds. So ideally what's going to happen here is I'm going to clean the glass really, really, really well. And then we're going to slide the heads inside of it. So to this base, we just painted it. We primed it first and then we painted it with like a silver kind of metallic. It's got some really interesting legs on it. It spins. I just thought it would make kind of it really, really fun. So I'm going to go ahead and clean this. If you guys are at this part in your build, you guys should clean this as well, and then we'll slide the heads together. Okay, so to decorate this up a little bit, I want to use some rope because you, I think in the theme, right, because they're miners, they use a lot of rope. So we're going to rope the corners up, and we'll also put a kind of a trim of rope along the bottom. So guys, we've got the lid on our box. So that is what it's going to kind of look like. We're still dressing it. 
the illusion is there. So for the top of this, you're probably wondering, oh, cat, what are you going to do? So for the top of this box, we wanted an apple. I went out shopping today. I could not find an apple large enough, but what I did find was a styrofoam ball. And so this is going to be our apple for the top of our box. I also found this was pretty neat. This is a tea light hand holder from the dollar store. It's a little witch's hand meant to sit like, like thing from the Adams family. However, I'm going to flip it, glue it and put our apple on top. This is the same kind of foam that the heads were made out of. So I'm going to just give you a quick breakdown and rundown of what I do to kind of seal it. So this is Mod Podge. And this is a little bit denser than school glue. Um, and the reason why I use it is because it seals it completely. It doesn't leave like a porous finish on it. But what I'm gonna do is also add in some color to give our apple some base. So I'm just gonna take that Mod Podge and put a fair amount in my palette. And then I'm gonna take, these are acrylic paints and they mix really, really well with Mod Podge. And I'm just gonna build up a beautiful kind of deep red. So I'm going to add some garlic red and I'm also going to add some magenta just for some color differentiation. And then we're going to make the apple really, really sparkly. So I've mixed the Mod Podge, the magenta and the scarlet red, and it gives us this type of a color. The reason why I'm putting a color on is because I'm going to put sparkles on this. And if you just put the red sparkles on, you'll see the styrofoam underneath. So I always put a, a nice even layer a nice coat of red on there. The Mod Podge does take a little bit longer to dry, but it is so worth it when you are trying to seal something like this. Use a brush, like an actual brush, not a sponge type brush, because you can get into all the cracks and all the little crevices, whereas a sponge type brush will pick too much up. As the Mod Podge is starting to get tacky, you start sprinkling, give it some good shakes, like this. Okay. Start shaking and sprinkling the apple with the sparkles. We've painted the apple with red. And then sprinkled it with the, mo with the sparkles so it has that kind of nice sparkly sheen to it. So we're taking this witch's hat and because it's green, and our mask is like a, a Caucasian flesh tone. We're gonna paint this with the exact same color we used. And I just mixed a whole bunch of colors together until we got something that we liked. So we're just gonna go ahead and paint this. Then we'll be almost done red. On the top of this thing, I was like, what do we do? What do we put on here? I have found these really cool kind of vintage animator drawings. So we've got Snow White and the Wicked Witch. We have Sneezy Doc, he's one of my favorites. Here, this is a little dopey. I have found these and just printed them out and I'm gonna Mod Podge them to the top of this unit just to kind of give it a little bit more of a decorative feel and keeping in mind that we're gonna have a centerpiece up here as well. So I just wanna place, make sure everything is placed according to this centerpiece because this is where our apple is gonna sit. So this is kind of just how they're gonna look on top of there. I'm gonna just put these corners down to make it look like they were just naturally and always there. I just want to point out that none of this is perfect. None of these, like they line up, but they're not like perfectly done. And that's the biggest thing with art, especially Halloween, kind of the more disheveled and less put together, the better. So don't ever worry about the little like imperfections because that always makes Halloween propage so good. That apple turned out amazing. That's All right, so guys, we have our finished piece here. We've got the candy red apple on the top. I'll bring you guys in for a close up in just a moment, but this is the illusion. So you got a whole head here and then it switches over to the witch's face. This project was super, super fun to make. It 
took about three good solid days at working at this. So this is the same illusion, as I said, that Disneyland uses in Haunted Mansion and Pirates of the Caribbean. So guys, that's it for today's video. My name's Kat, as always, thank you for stopping in. This has been a super, super fun build for me and I hope you guys are building along or at least taking some notes. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content. I got a bunch of Halloween content coming down the pipeline, everything from prop building to decor, to party ideas, to makeup, you name it. We got it coming down the line. So if you're subscribed, you won't miss it. And we'll see you guys in my next video.